football. One of the big stories locally last week was uh, hearing that Jim Jimite, after 26 seasons, is uh, stepping down as the head coach at Scotia Glenville. Got a call from Zach By, who played for uh, Coach G and uh, wanted to come on the program. We may hear from Zach By out in Denver, our, our former colleague. But what a, what a career in terms of, of just coaching record. 401, 74, 26 seasons, a uh, couple of state championships. Uh, Zach had the stat. I'll throw it out here if I can remember it correctly. And then Coach G can back this up. 15 or more wins. 15 or more wins. 15 consecutive seasons. Mm. That's incredible. Uh, Jim Jimite joins us here on Big Board Sports. Good morning, Coach. Gentlemen, how are you? We are good, Jim, Coach. Great, and, man. uh, boy, congr- I guess, I guess it's congratulations on, just a phenomenal career, and it sounds like you're going out when you wanted to go out, right? You th- th- it just been in the works for uh, a couple of years now. At least you contemplating when you might decide. Okay, enough is enough. What what was the what was the final straw, Coach? Well, I wouldn't say it's enough is enough, but uh, when it comes to age, um, being my son, it's it's time to put that aside and and uh, and attend to that. Yeah, he's what 14 years old, and is he 14? Is, he's pretty good. Uh, he, he needs to improve, but I'm, I'm sure we'll work on it. <laughs> All right. Well, looking back, I mean, how do you, how do you, how do you look back at, uh, have you had a chance since you officially made this announcement last week? How do you look back at, tw- at 26 seasons? Well, the, for, for me, the unfolding of those seasons isn't, isn't, um, isn't something that just ha- you retire and then it happens because I was very fortunate to, that it was just so much more than basketball with the um, with the players that I coached. Uh, the relationships you developed have just continued through those twenty six years. So it, it's a con- it's a constant reminder um, of that uh, it was so much more than just the game. And um, they continue to you know as the, as the players continue to grow into into really successful uh, adults and through the the, the Terrence Capoles and Zach Buys and you know some of the earlier earlier kids, the Mark Mortensons and and Jim Jansons and the Parra boys. It goes on and on and on. And Terrell Winnie and Joe Cremos and um, it's endless. And it's just relationships you develop. So there's no real like all of a sudden looking back and saying, um, what did I do for 26 years? If that makes sense. Jim, or, uh, it's, it's great to talk to you, man. You, you, you had a, a streak of 53 straight wins, uh, during your two title run. You had a run of 78 consecutive games won against section two teams that started in 2011. It ended in 2016. And, and all this credit to, to Jim Schultz of the Daily Gazette, who did a great piece, uh, on your retirement. Can you give us a, a couple of, snapshots from your career are they the championships or are they things that maybe we didn't see from a media perspective just looking from the outside in well certainly the the climax and you know that you have those moments those defining moments that everyone the true double overtime game for instance Mm. the second troy game which such a such a worthy great opponent and so you have those and you have but it's the day in and day out that um that makes that that really the, the the win streak at fifty three or seventy seven. It's all it's all the mornings at at seven o'clock, seven thirty that those players were there year after year after year. And that's it, you know, and every day in the summer. It wasn't like, okay, we did it for a week and they just showed up. So it's really how how blessed I've been to have student student athletes that would work that hard, be that committed and that loyal to a program and each other. Coach, hanging around with Zach by all the years that I have, and he worked with with us for six years when we were at the Denver. We we always talked about your program and how you built your program, and he, and and he always brought up one thing he was most proud of about Scotia Glenville is that the players in that team were Scotia kids, and that you know they they stayed in that community. You know, nowadays you have a lot of this is a interchangeable parts going on out there, right? Kids going here and then they're leaving here and they're going to this school because they want to win and all. all we we we've been through a lot of that. We see it still happening. But with your program, how are you able to keep Scotia kids in Scotia and still be as successful as you have been for all those years? Well, it's it's a it's a great point, and and um, that's what I was I was going to get to that as I continue talking them. Um, that's I think I'm, um, that's the proudest part of this this group of um, you know fine young men have been around. They're born and raised in Scotia. There's this is there's no imports. There's no pieces added that were 
um, that we needed. We didn't go out and get anyone. We didn't offer anything, but to, that's all we offered is if, if people, if, if the youth from Scotia worked hard, Scotia Glenwood community, there'd be an opportunity. And, and to do that, we provided opportunity to answer your question over and over and over again. And then we just tried to bring, make them feel like it was a special place to play and, and make them feel part of a, a family, which they truly were, not just, not just a, uh, a number. All right, Jim, so give, give us some real talk here, man. Uh, does Zach By make your all-time starting five? <laughs> <laughs> Zach By. It just by, by it, it may be sheer consistency and will and, and everything else he's got to make the top five. It's, it's hard to leave him. It's hard to leave him off. Um, I never really thought of a top five, but, um, Zach is up there for all. Zach by brings some tangibles that, uh, that, that a program just lives and dies by. And he just bled Scotia all the way, all the way through. Still does. Oh, so. He's still. Cremo's cut out of the yeah. same cloth, right? Yeah, Joe I mean, Cremo's right there. Oh, uh, Joe Cremo is just—they're just in Terrell Winnie and in mm-hmm. Terrence, but they're so little. So to think of to think of, you know, to think of Joe transferring to another school or a, or a private school, you'd have to rip off his left arm, and then that wouldn't have been enough. You have to take his right leg and something else because he wasn't going. You know, he was he was there and he was he was all in from from day one. Yeah, New York and, State uh, basketball player of the year at, at Scotia, yeah. and we know what he, we know what a job he's done in just a couple of seasons over at U Albany with two more seasons to go. Joe Cremo, special, special young man that played for uh, Coach G. Um, so what? So I, the other question I want to ask you is: How many mornings uh, on on a weekend were you down working with the say the third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade levels to see what they were doing and how they were being coached? It was always, I mean, once, once we realized, like, Jim printed it, Jim, um, printed it because that those early years, once we figured out what we needed to do, then it really, I mean, it's, it sounds, it sounds, um, somewhat sad to some people, but it literally was, you think about that program 365 days a year. There was something put into that program. People say, really, even, yeah, even on Christmas, you'd be thinking the next day we have practice. And going into a Christmas tournament, we're going to do this right. We're going to figure out what we need to do. So it was just 365. So it was nonstop to answer your question. Yeah, I mean, something I, I, going on. You know, stopping by a practice, going to a practice, watching kids play. Um, you know, Glenn Sapero had a huge part of what we did. Checking in with Glenn, going to his games, attending attending the travel games, and it's just something. It's it's the deal is it's like, um, you, I'm just hardwired for it. You know. It was at, at, at birth, I think. Some, someone checked that. So instead of luxury package, they, they checked Coach Fox. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, here's my, here's my follow-up <laughs> question, Coach, is that as hardwired as you are and everything that you just mentioned that you've been doing, how do you now back off of that? What, what is it going to be like not being the head basketball coach at Scotia Glenville? I, Roger, I... I have no idea. It's just it's one of these things where you're going to have to navigate that as it uh, as it comes along, and hopefully I can I can put this um, I can get this boat into the dock. <laughs> that's that could be a tough problem. I hope it doesn't <laughs> hope it doesn't go down. You know, so that's that's all that's all in the future, and I just I you have to see because I feel like like I said before, I think I'm hardwired in some way to be to coach and instruct and just and um, spend time around the game of basketball. For people who may not have seen Jimmer coach, he's, I always say he's like the Jay Wright of the, of section two hoops, best dressed dude on the sidelines. Oh, and at the same time would probably kick every one of his players butts past and present in the weight room. Uh, but, but coach, what I, you also teach math at the highest level at the high school level and, and, and you could certainly do it beyond that. What's more difficult trying to teach, uh, like AP calc? To a high school kid or coaching hoops? Oh well, there's coaching basketball. It's hard. It's, it's so much more difficult because there's so many variables that you just can't control. You know, when you're when you're teaching honor students, you you obviously you have to work, but they they are really geared towards towards math, and it's you know there's so many personalities on a basketball court, and everyone has to play their role. And I talked about that in an article. Everyone has to be excel in their role. And that's what Scotia's been. 
role player. Everyone's a role player. You know that. LeBron James is a role player. His, his role is to score points, right, and, and rebound and do it. Everyone's a role player. And in a math class, you really don't give people roles. Everyone's on seriously the same, at the same level, so to speak. There's no role players in a math class. Spoken like so someone getting everyone, who... Get, getting everyone to work together is, is that, you know? Uh, is, is the challenge. Coach, before I cut you off there, I was going to say, spoken like somebody who never had me in math class, that would be a challenge. <laughs> well, I would have got I would have got to the guidance office quickly. And say, that's, <laughs> I, that's how you figure that out. That's, I, I would have helped you out. I always say in sports, it is never easy to replace a guy like a legendary guy who's had so much darn success. It's almost like, do you really want to be the next guy in the door after a Four hundred and one seventy four career in twenty six seasons, and we just went through all the records. Unbelievable! But somebody's got to be the next to replace you. Do we have any idea who that is going to be? Well, I would think the, the front runner for that job. I don't know that the administration and athletic committee will make that decision, but certainly, um, I would recommend Mark Sawsville. And I don't know if you can you can possibly get a better. I don't even call him a replacement. I just call that someone stepping in yeah. for a seamless transition. Yep. He was, so, uh, he's been with you for a while, I know, and his son plays, so that it, it makes perfect sense. And he was a tremendous head coach back in the day for many years at Schenectady. That's tremendous with the, with the state championship underneath his belt. So I, I, I don't think there's really, um, any, any, like I said, any great, great down, um, downshifting or downsizing or whatever you want to say. I think it's going to be seamless. Well, I know one thing, Coach, and I know it's going to be hard for you to figure out what you're going to do, but I can almost guarantee you you are going to be at Saratoga Racecourse a few more times between now and the end of the 40-day meet. How about that? Well, that's a special place as well. I always I always find that to be uh, world-class world class people doing their thing. So wherever there's that kind of, uh, that kind of action going on, you kind of like to see people doing what they do best. And, and that's that's really any venue. Is that the truth or what? Well, Coach G, I'm, I'm coaching fifth grade travel over in uh, in Colony. Needs an assistant. Uh, I, may, say? I, I, may, <laughs> I may reach out to you and say, hey, we have a special guest lecturer tonight go. at practice, and, and I may ask you to come in and, and at least say hello to our kids. Would you do that? That I promise I will do to any, any group that needs me to do. And um, the only thing I ask is when I do watch you, if I... If I um if I hear you yelling and screaming and, and getting carried away, that I can have a few words with you. After. Yeah, well, <laughs> you, you'll be having a few words with me once you see me over there. I'm out of my mind, and, and, and uh, I, I need to calm down. But anyway, the good coach, news is everyone knows that, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> coach, we appreciate it. Congrats on a phenomenal career, and enjoy enjoy life away from hoop. Although I don't think you're ever going to get too far away from that. But thanks for coming on Big Board Sports. All right, gentlemen, enjoy the rest of the day.